All right. So this is um, the benchmarking and efficiency subcommittee of the budget task force. Uh, we're awaiting two members to join us, but I think we'll get started as we're going to join the other group at um, 1.30. Um, I guess I'll just plan to run the conversation like we did on Monday, if that's okay. But if anybody wants to jump in, please do. So um, Valerie was able to circulate um, kind of our to-dos that we came up with on Monday. And I know that it's only been 48 hours since we last met. Um, just want to see if anybody would like to update on any progress that was made today or any questions that we might have based upon if anyone has had time to go over the data. And then we can prepare how we want to have a conversation with the rest of our committee at 1.30. I'll, I'll start um, just because I've been looking at these budgets for, I don't know, I feel like two weeks. Um, I'm still trying to kind of assemble all of that data in my head into something that makes sense that we can actually move forward with. So it's still sort of a work in progress in for me. It might actually be easier for somebody else to look at the data that hasn't been looking at it for so long and sort of see better things, but this is kind of some of the things that I came up with. Um, I have kind of a, a list of general budget questions for Westford. Um, I wanted to ask Dan O'Donnell to get a history of all of our utility costs for our electric, gas, and oil, maybe going back a few years, but total across our whole budget, because there are several towns that have those budgets in their facilities budget. So again, it's it's tough to it's tough to compare. I mean, it's also tough to compare because we don't know how many buildings, but just to kind of get an idea of how, what percentage of our budget is utility costs, um, all of our maintenance costs, again, across all the departments, um, our, our, vehicle our vehicle maintenance costs, total number of custodians. Um, and those were all because there are several towns that have one, two, all of those things, for the most part, put into um, a separate budget, either a vehicle maintenance budget or a facilities budget. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to try to get was just a little bit more of a comprehensive list of grants per department, um, like kind of in a table format. There were several communities. Um, I really like the way they laid out their, their budgets and they, they were very upfront about all of the grant money or if it was revolving fund money or fees or whatever, they, they listed that right kind of right in with their budgets. So you could see exactly um, how much other money was coming in. And I feel like our budget, you know, sometimes does that and sometimes not. It seems a little inconsistent across the departments. It's also not as clear as some of these, these departments were. And there were some grants that I was like, oh, I wonder if we're getting these or what's the, you know, what's, what's kind of going on with those. Um, I could run through some other ones. Our, our library seems like it's got a large number of FTEs, which I think I mentioned last time and Amy was gonna, you know, look at the hours. I haven't had time to look at that. Um, recreation department, um, there were a lot of towns whose recreation department cost the general fund zero because they made up for it in fees. I know that doesn't always happen with ours. Um, and I thought I had listed that as a question. Oh, I do. Um, I also wanted to get a history of, um, for our recreation department, how much money hits, hits the general fund over the last few years um, to just sort of see where, where we are. Cause I know it kind of jumps around a lot in the last couple of years is probably not the greatest um, example, but it would still be interesting to see um, the health department, um, as far as the health department goes, I kind of wanted to, I know the Westford health department and the uh, board of health has been looking to like increase efforts and go towards like a certification. And I still don't exactly understand what that means. I think Kristen, I think you mentioned that last night at, yeah. at the select board meeting, um, it looks like our health department is a little more expensive than other towns, but again, I'm so in the weeds with the data that it's it's sort of hard to parse out at, at, at this point. Um, 
but I kind of want to just dive into that a little bit. It's not a ton of money. It's not like we're going to be saving a million dollars, but I think just something to sort of keep an eye on. Um, uh, the next biggest one was like ambulance. Um, that was a little difficult to compare because a lot of them embed ambulance with fire and, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to, to pull out just the ambulance portion or sometimes I couldn't find um, what their estimated revenue was. But a couple of things that I noted, um, again, I wanted to see what the, um, what the cost of our ambulance was to the general fund kind of over, over our history. Um, and if we could get a history of any funds that were, um, I guess, written off for better, for lack of a better word, to resident ambulance use, ambulance usage, because I don't know if you guys, if uh, Amy and Vibhu know that our ambulance service doesn't charge residents for ambulance service, um, unless they have a high deductible plan or something like that. It changed recently, so they may collect some from residents, but um, not necessarily. And I didn't, it was tough to, to gauge whether other communities did that or not. I think the, I think the uh, fire department kind of went through that and, um, but that, that would be something else to kind of look into. Um, there are also, I, I came across a, several communities that have raised their ambulance rates and some do it like every year. Um, and I don't remember the chief mentioning that in some of our budget hearings. So I thought he said that most of it was um, sort of set by Medicare or Medicaid. Um, so I kind of wanted to get a little clarification on our end for that. Acton leases their ambulances. I thought that was sort of interesting. I don't know if we've looked at that. Um, and then there were several towns that had a lot higher ambulance revenue than we than we do. And I was hoping maybe the maybe the chief or somebody could give some sort of insight as to why that may be the case. Dispatch was another area. Um, a lot of towns include that with police, sometimes fire. Um, the number of our dispatchers seems high. And um, so I think we need to maybe dive into that a little bit. Um, several towns regionalize their dispatch. In fact, Acton is looking into regionalizing with Concord, I believe. Um, and I don't know if they're in the investigation stage or if they're in the actual, we're doing it and figuring out how, how to put it together, but um, we may wanna um, look into that. Um, see the grant question again. Uh, okay. Um, and the only other thing for dispatch was, um, I guess it was for this upcoming budget, we're adding a 12th dispatcher. So we may not have an idea yet on how that is working out. Um, we did a lot of projections when we were looking at adding right. that one. So I'm sure we could work that in and how it was going to be reducing over time. And callbacks. Right. And I think I was, I was in my head, I had forgotten that FY24 has not started yet. So I was asking for, how's it going? But <laughs> not going to know. Um, I know the DPW has been looking at um, including vehicle maintenance for all of our vehicles. Um, and I'd be curious to hear from Steve Cronin to see, you know, how far they've gotten with that. Um, uh, that was the only other thing um, that was our health insurance, which is a big portion of the budget. And I did come across, again, several towns that have a high deductible plan option for their employees. Um, and we don't. Um, so I think it would be interesting to see if we can add that as a plan option. Um, it, it may reduce our costs and may reduce employees' costs as well. If you know, young healthy people might might not be going to the doctor as often. So th I, those are sort of my thoughts. They're they're a little you know, a little all over the place. But that was sort of some of the stuff that I came up with, like just sort of looking through other budgets. Um, 
oh, veteran services was another one that several towns have regionalized. Um, whether it saves them money or not, you know, is, I'm not 100% sure. Great, that's really helpful. Um, I think a lot of these questions <laughs> we can work with Dan on and get the answers to. We might have to get mm -hmm. into the department questionnaires and get some more information as well. Um, to your point in health insurance, they added a tab to the benchmarking um, work we've been doing and spent some time last night just uh, trying to add some information about health insurance. As you said, it's different in every town and a little bit confusing. So I'll be spending some more time on that this week, um, just kind of getting us um, oriented and then we can reach out to those individual uh, human resources departments uh, if we need to. And then um, I do need to still do the spreadsheet on the um, the data sources that we'll be using. Um, I have not gotten to that yet, but I have a big chunk of time set out tomorrow to do that. Hello. Hey, Jenny. Hi, How I'm are sorry. You? Well, I'm late because we were in a UNA negotiation. So it just ended, but we got, we got some good news for that. Good. Um, so we were just going, Christina was going through just some questions that she had based upon other budgets she's been researching. I've been taking some notes, so I'll send those out to the, the group after. And then I had just updated um, that I've been doing some research on municipalities, um, health insurance plans and how they uh, secure health insurance. So I'll get that over and I'm still working on the spreadsheet for the, um, the sources of data. So I'll get that around to this group as well. Um, Amy, do you want to explain um, any work that you've done, including the library uh, research? Sure. Um, I, I just sent a, a, a little a little file there, but it looks like we are open like the least amount of hours of everybody else. Um, several other communities have multiple branches, so that's why those numbers are really high. Um, not several, but a few. Um, so, I mean, not by a, I mean, we're open 47 hours a week and then the next one's 51, but you know, average um, is more than that. So we're, we're below everybody in that regard. Um, I started looking into the Council on Aging uh, hours, um, but ran into the way that they sort of associate them differently. This Council on Aging and the Senior Centers. So trying to just parcel that out a little bit too. And I'll get that wrapped up in the next day or two. Uh, and then I just, I kind of came up with some general questions to ask department heads that were less specific. And so um, I don't know if you want me to share those here or if there's a place we're putting them together. Feel free to share them and then we can create a document for all of us to work from. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, these are pretty general and I think it's just more of that reflection piece for these people, but um, it might help us undercover why who's different and why they're different, but um, are there any are there services your department provides that may be unique to your or our community and why is that? Are there services your department does not provide that are often provided in other communities? If so, why? And then asking about potential revenue sources that might be available, what those challenges could be, and what the benefits. Are there areas your department could cut costs and what would those outcomes look like? Um, and other areas your department could benefit from more funding and what could you accomplish uh, with, with that opportunity? So I, I think it's much less specific, but it kind of is getting at letting them do some of the work that we're trying to do too. So. I like that. I, I, I like asking them. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great, Amy, if you can just send those to me, um, if you have them in a Word document, I'll compile that. I, I did try to jot them down, but I wanna make sure that I'm um, capturing your questions. I think that they're open-ended enough that um, it gets the department head thinking, but they're not so like yes and no. So it will make them provide some answers and critically think. Anybody else want to share anything that they've been 
working on the past 48 hours. Um, Chris, uh, Christine, I am not sure if I can share my screen. I did look into some of the data. Uh, just want to show you, you, Christina, you mentioned that when I'm looking into data from another angle, what I can see. And I'm new into this, so I, I don't want to go to conclusion, but just bring it up here. So let me know once you can see my screen. I just gave you the hosting capabilities, so you should be able to do that. Yep, it's coming up now. I can see your tab for the internet. There we go. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, hope you can see the full screen. Is that right? I can see blue, green, and a myriad of colors, so three columns. Right. So the first one is the population, just to ensure that we have the data for all the uh, all the benchmarking based on population, then according to that, there is an income per capita because sometimes your span is also based on how much per capita income you are getting. And then there are different kinds of spans and those spans we, um, based on some standard deviation, we are able to put into four different clusters like um, the orange, blue, red, and yellow. So, if we see, and according to the span, this will be in different stage. For example, if I look into these towns, um, almost everyone in this span, Christina is from one of the tab where you had different kind of spans there, like cultural, debt service, education, fire, all these spans. So that's the average you took there. So that's what I took here. So it seems we behave like these towns. and if I look in terms of um, the town which are lower than us, most of those towns except Chelmsford has much lower per capita income. So the question might be for Chelmsford is um, they have less than us in terms of per capita income, but they are the neighbor town, what they are doing, which might helping them to keep their um, cost little lower than us. But if I look into rest of the towns, it seems pretty similar span analysis or span in terms of population and per capita income. The town which spend much more than us are mostly having very high per capita income, except Bedford, where the reason for this town to spend more is a very low size of the population. So this is how I am doing. I don't know, is it a right way to look into stuff or not, but happy to get a feedback here. Bibu, this is, this is great having it visual. This is what I could not do. So thank you so much. Can you can you explain again what the the one to the very right with the different colors, what, no. what, were the, the, what was the number again? How did you calculate that? So this is, this is the clustering analysis, Christina. If we take all this town, I put those into the four clusters based on the average value. Like if you will see everyone, everyone which is in blue, their mm -hmm. expenditure is almost similar. So we can always see what towns are very similar to us. And the one which are in X red, they are expanding a lot more than us. Or this That's one... So these are like four different clusters of spending or the quartiles of spending. Is it like an average of those four areas or what, how did you, how is that like for Westford is- This is statistical um, analysis, which system oh, do. Okay. They just like the way in the school, you put the kids into the percentile decile. So in the same way, they are putting it into the four quartiles, all the, all the towns. And if you see, this is, our span is 4550, Reading is 4273, 4436, 4320, like that. So almost everything in between 4200 to 4500 is in similar color. And, and that, that was a statistical, like some sort of statistical calculation to get that 4550 for yes. Westford? Okay. So that is, the so 4550 is what you have put into the table all this span divided by this is per capita oh, oh divided gotcha, by the population. Gotcha. so this is your number just demonstrating okay. in this visuals so this oh okay like so like a per res gotcha okay thank you yeah 
So, and then we can look into all this from different aspects. For example, if I look into culture and recreation, I think Christina, you mentioned this. It seems a lot of towns spend much lower than what we are spending. There are some towns which spend too high, but we are in the second cluster here where the towns like Acton, Wakefield, Stoneholm, Westboro, these are spending significantly lower than us in culture and recreation. So the question for the town uh, group is, maybe we are doing something more than other towns, which we need to understand. And for other towns like Acton is, how, are there saving opportunity or something? So in a, in a same way, um, another one was, that service, this is something which I don't know what does it mean, but it seems like we have um, significantly higher than the similar towns here. Um, but as I mentioned, I don't know what does it mean, so <laughs> I don't want to make comment on, but it looked high to me uh, versus other. Um, education, it seems. Um, we are doing fine. I do see few towns, but then either they have lower per capita income or very high population. If I look into the size of the population and per capita income, it seems we are fairly on a right track. I, and this is high level. I I don't see option for me to ask a lot of question on this one. Then, um, the next one was fire, but I can create the slides on this entire thing and send it across to everyone so that you can look into it from your aspect. And same way, Christina, I can create the another one, which is for the next spend, which, uh, which was the last tab you created. If, if that's helpful, I can do that. That's super helpful for me. Um, did you did you take those numbers from the tab labeled spending by function or spending detail? I will open that one maybe just uh, so down. So there, this one is this. Um, <laughs> This is the one and the spending details. This is the spending by function. Okay. Like police, fire, this one. Right. This one I am just building. This will take a little bit time, but this also we can build like council of aging health. Okay. Same, same visual. We can yeah. build and create PDF or whatever and can send it. So this That's is the spending by function. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that. I mean, that's an awesome way to to look at them. Um, if and I can I can I can help you um, figure out uh, the reason I I created that spending detail sheet mm -hmm. is because the spending by function I found um, different towns were putting different things in different areas. So comparing what culture and recreation was, let's say as an example, across all the towns didn't necessarily mean that they were paying for all the same stuff. So it, was, it wasn't an apples to apples comparison. Um, but if you can do that with the spending detail page, and again, I can, you know, you and I could work together to, to put it into whatever, yeah. you know, that we, we helps work, you, yeah. that would be, that's awesome. Cause I, that's what I was not able to do <laughs> was no, to this, look at yeah. things like that. Yeah, this is easy. This is not gonna take That's time. great. Yeah. I had a quick question, um, and while you have this up on the screen, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Mike. Anyway, um, and this is kind of like a, a thinking out loud question: Is when we see a, so the spending different and the per, income per capita lower, is that where is that where like commercial bases would come into play? Because Am I understanding that the correctly that that the green income per capita we're saying that's like household 
how much people make at their jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And and then the other column for type of spend for type of, like there's so many other things that can come into that, right? So yeah. I think I think this is helpful when we talk about things like, you know, the Hingham report talked a lot about like how they sort of looked at, and I know this is so subjective, but like some sort of like a town's ability to pay, right? When you think about like an override or something. And so that's that's helpful to think about when we think about like what's a new revenue option. Um, when I think, when I look at this to try to think about how are people kind of making up for that the lower income per capita. I, I'm just I'm just making sure that I'm sanity checking that with someone who knows town finance as well. So is that where that gap would come from? Is that what you think? I saw you nod your head, Christina. That's that's certainly on the track of where I was thinking because I started sort of looking at what percent of the town's revenue comes from residential property taxes versus um, commercial, industrial, and personal property taxes, and also other resources, you know, whether that's yeah. local receipts, um, state aid, blah, 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 right? You know, right. all of that kind of stuff. So um, I know that, that one of the tabs has some of that information. I don't think it has, oh no, I think it does have, it does have the residential versus the commercial, industrial, and personal property like splits. Okay. Um, one of those tabs has that. I think yeah. what it what it doesn't have, um, and this maybe a little bit more for the revenue group, but um, I've always yeah. sort of been interested in um, that split between what the residents pay versus what businesses pay over time, and what the um, like what, what the commercial tax bills are, they don't seem to move at all. Um, and so I think more of the tax, in my mind, it feels like more of the tax levy as it grows just gets thrown onto the residents and the commercial, you know, the businesses aren't, their tax bills are not increasing like ours are. Um, it, that doesn't increase the, the amount of money we have. It's just the split the between burden. who's paying it. Right. Um, but I, I think people are going to be interested in that, but that, that may be a little more in the, in the, I'm not sure where that falls. It seems like it might be a little bit more in the, the revenue groups um, wheelhouse. Okay. I just want to, I, yeah, sorry. Thank you for thinking that through with me. And just want to add, this is awesome. I love, I love data presented <laughs> visually. So, I mean, I could totally geek out on this. Thank you. Me for too. <laughs> Yeah, Miss, I, I was struggling in looking at Excel, so I spent some time. It's easy. So I will I will create, Christina, I will need some help from you. Sure. Uh, for example, I uh, when I look into file Concord, we don't have much stuff uh, in the file. And yeah. then you can guide me better because I just sure. it randomly based on what I know. Yeah, I, I, I can certainly help you. Um, yeah, I think Concord was blank for a lot of stuff for some reason. I, I don't know why, um, but maybe we can yeah. figure that out. Although interesting enough, Concord's recreation department completely pays for itself. So it costs their residents nothing in the tax levy. And I think there was one other town that did that too. And Tewksbury just doesn't even seem to have a rec department. I could not find anything. <laughs> Concord has like a, a facility, right? Doesn't it? I think they, they have a pretty robust thing going. So does like Belmont. They have pools yeah. and everything. Yeah. Right. I just, I had one more question and I don't, Valerie, you might be able to answer this best. I, is, is a... Student to teacher ratio, is that a statewide requirement or is that different based from town to town? Um, do you mean, like, I mean, it's a it's a metric that everybody collects, but our, like Westford has sort of um, a policy guideline of 22 kids in elementary schools and elementary classes, 25 kids in secondary classes. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I didn't know if that was it, consistent across the, uh, the state or, okay. So, I mean, that could be a, another yes. piece of this puzzle as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
do we want to move on to schools? I feel like, you know, maybe sort of municipal side. I don't know if there's anything else we can really talk about, but the school, I didn't really look at the schools at all in any of this because it was just, it was too daunting for me to try to compare <laughs> across schools. And I know Jenny was going to, was going to get some information. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, we, we will can do something just like for school, the data visual visualization is really awesome. So if we can do something like a similar to school side, uh, there will be very helpful, very powerful. Jenny, we can do it. Uh, well, I, I will look into the data and create something. Okay. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, I found out some data, more detailed data set from DESI website today because I realized Department of Local Service, their data bank is really organized, but they, DESI's data set, they are in different locations. You have to find, poke around to find it. Actually, today, I found the data from fiscal year 18 to fiscal year 22, the total school spending by each function code. So I can send it to Weibo and maybe you can help me uh, do something just like in the chart you show us before for each function code so we can see uh, what's their, you know, spending average compared to other school districts. That sounds great. I thought we were going to have to do the Christina analysis and we'll pull that manually. So. Right, right. That's very Jenny. exciting. Yes. Jenny, I looked into DESI data for school. Just one thing you need to check on this is the Westford data for 22 is correct or not. Um, that Please check on that one. Uh, so you mean fiscal year 22's data? Yeah, so 22, I don't remember which had it seems like food or something. It seems that's very, very high value is there per pupil. Uh, so, so I was like, is it a good data to work on? I, I looked into that data set, yeah. Okay, today I will upload a new set of data which are broken down by each function call. That's why I just found out yesterday. So that spreadsheet has not been updated to the budget task force shared folder. So I will do that today because I just found out that yesterday afternoon. Uh, so that's most up-to-date up data. And, and Vibhu, if you have a specific data point that you're seeing that you're wondering about a discrepancy. I'd love to see as specific as you can get if it's a screenshot or send me a really? link, send me a link with like what number you're questioning. Because I, I think what we're learning, right, is that there's sometimes there are differences in what we report and versus what we use as a town. Um, so I think anything we can learn with our own information versus what's reported that t tells us something about what numbers we're seeing from other places too. Great, so we have about 20 minutes left. I wanna make sure that we know kind of what we wanna report back out to the larger group um, and also, if there's any other questions um, that people came up with to ask our department heads or um, other municipalities, or if there was municipalities we thought we wanted to reach out to based upon the conversation we had on Monday. So that is like three questions in one. I apologize for that. Take it however you wish. I think that lovely chart that has been created might, might provide us with a, a perfect answer of what communities we should sort of target, right? If we can most easily line those up to see where we fit, um, that might be a good place to start with that five or six. I like that, that approach. makes sense. Yeah, I think Bib, um, Bibu's analysis might um, narrow down a little bit more because I was again I was sort of all over the place there were certain communities where I was like I don't think we're going to learn much from them because 
they have so much more money than us that it's just it's just not really going to help. Um, but somebody who's close to us that's spending a little bit less, like actually, Franklin on Quick Look looked pretty interesting, um, just because they were very similar. But yet, if I remember correctly, they did spend a little bit less, um, or maybe it was less per person, or there was something that that sort of caught my eye with them. Um, the school data, I think, is going to be difficult. Um, so I'll be interested to see what what Jenny was able to get out. So I will email, email everyone for the new uh, data set today. So we can start from there. And Jenny, I will take just a day, maximum a day to build. Uh, uh, the stuff so it should not be uh, time consuming stuff for okay. me yep. thank you so much great All right, so I think we'll have our answers about what towns to go to. Um, we started a list of questions, Valerie before and Jenny, before you got on board to ask kind of our individual departments or our finance team on the town side. Um, I don't think we have similar questions for the school side at this time yet because um, I guess we don't have a, a, a citizen going through Jenny's data. Maybe once Bibi goes through her data, he can uh, evaluate some questions that you might have or. Um, Valerie, I don't know, as a, as a school committee member, if you will have additional questions based upon that data as well. Yeah, I, I think I think knowing, um, I think there's two sets, right? Like to come at it with a fresh fresh look and then to, to know what I've known, I've learned over three years of looking through school budgets. Um, happy, happy to do that. Great. All right, so in terms of um, reporting back to the group at 1.30, I think presenting um, what we've come up with in terms of benchmark communities uh, as we've added two and subtracted one, uh, I think that's important. Um, I think just sharing the data that we have collected in the areas that we're trying to dig into further that are, might be areas that are a little bit confusing, such as health insurance, um, dispatch, ambulance, um, Christina, am I missing one or two others that you the, kind of flagged? The other big ones were um, like public facilities and fleet maintenance, which maintenance, we don't have yeah. in the in the DPW area. I think those are probably the the biggest differences that I can think of. Yeah. Okay. At least in and reporting. Then, and then areas where you know the town hall may not be a thirty-seven and a half hour or forty hour. Uh, work week, we should look at that similar to what Amy's looking at related to library and COA to do those comparisons. And perhaps we just do uh, a short set of our benchmark communities related to that because some might just not make sense at all. Um, schools, I think every, every student has to go 180 days and the teachers are pretty similar in all communities, but please correct me if I'm wrong, if there's any, any outliers. Um, no, I think that's a, at a high level. I think people, um, different districts, I don't have a ton of experience here, but I think different districts set up um, sort of like their curriculum departments differently or um, sort of the coaching and evaluation um, hierarchies and stuff. But I think overall, uh, we're, we're probably comparable. Okay. Kristen, what did you mean with the 37 and a half hours in town hall? What yeah, so some of our employees are 37 and a half hour a week employees, some are 40 hour a week employees, our town hall is open 8am to 4pm Monday through Friday. Um, some uh, other municipalities I know have 35 hour a week positions for full time, um, some town halls maybe open more hours or less hours. Um, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference on the impact but um, it might be worth something to take a look at. One, one other thing that I was um, thinking of is, um, and I, I think Amy, you might've kind of jogged my memory on this as far as 
um, coming up with a list of sort of what what each department, um, what kind of services they provide, and trying to look at that maybe across the the cut down maybe set of of communities um, to see where we might be different in that in that regard. Um, and the one thing that keeps popping into my head is clearing of sidewalks. You know, Westford only clears like a couple of sidewalks. And I kept wondering whether other DPWs cleared all their sidewalks and how many miles of sidewalk that was. Um, couldn't find any information on that. So I don't know how far we'll get. But I guess my thought was sort of similar to, to your line was, if we're, if we're spending more or less in one particular area, can we at least point to we're providing these three services and the other towns that are that are spending more are also providing X, Y, and Z, or, you know, we're not, or other towns are not providing whatever, like kind of as a, at a high level. Um, and if people, I see heads nodding, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, um, but you know what I mean? Like things like that, so we can say, okay, our library is open X hours a week. Um, let's just say, for example, if we were spending less in a particular area, let me get change my thought on this. Um, if we were spending less in a particular area, maybe we could try to say, well, we're only providing these three services. Other towns also provide this, but they're also spending X amount more. Like, would you really want to do that? Or vice versa, other towns are not providing this service um, and they're saving you know, X amount of money or something like that. Um, one of the things that made me think of that was a little bit in the ambulance area, because there are some towns that don't look like they have an ambulance service at all. Like they contract out. Kristen, I was trying to find, figure out what Shrewsbury does and I, I couldn't. Yep. So they have a no cost uh, contract with UMass. So we, uh, the Shrewsbury garages, the ambulance in one of their fire stations, uh, but there is no charge to the town of Shrewsbury. So there's sort of major things like that, that, you know, I, I don't exactly know what our ambulance sort of costs us. Um, that was kind of one of my questions, but that's sort of something to highlight that, you know, there are towns that, that have, have an alternative method and, you know, do we want to go that route or not? But it's just a, a question. I think some of that can be so helpful, right? Because benchmarking just the amounts is only half the story. And I, I know we, we see that on the schools all the time that someone can say like, oh, we, um, I don't know, you, you know, whatever we're spending, but usually it actually comes up, I feel like as an elected official, someone will say, point out a service, right? That another district is getting or another, you know, look over here and, um, you know, there's, an, a, there's five languages offered at the middle school instead of three or, or and it's it's fine right like we make the choices that we make with the money we have um but sometimes it is good to understand some of those things like our class size um even something as small as like we offer freshman sports or what our languages at the middle school are um you know i, I just think some of that is so powerful beyond just the numbers or the, the straight spending comparison i don't I don't know how to like solve that, right? Like how to collect all of that or what's powerful um, now as we're talking about it, but. I think that's a challenge we'll get to, like we're gonna wanna, wanna know more, ask for more, dig in more, but when do we say, okay, stop, enough is enough. We need to get to our solution. So that's really gonna be a tough, tough point. Right, because I think in the end, we can compare all we want, but what's right for Westford, you know, I mean, if every other town, I'd be like, if everyone jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, you know, I'm going to like play the mom card, <laughs> like that's not right for everybody. I, I think, you know, what's, what are the goals of these departments, and are they reaching them, and can they reach them with less services, or do they need more services, or more funding, um, is just making sure that those outcomes are being achieved, or um, working towards them. Um, and is there, is there fluff or is there extra, maybe that it isn't adding to that ultimate goal?
So do we want to spend the last few minutes talking about what we might do next um, as our working group? I know Jenny and Vibu are going to work on the school data. Um, I'm going to work, continue to get the health insurance data and the, um, the source data. Um, Amy will continue to do the, the COA and maybe we combine in town hall data. Maybe it's just not worth it. I don't know. Um, what other things outstanding do we think we would want to be working on to get to our end goal? How much did I miss about the, um, the interviewing? Can you recap that? Because we, um, Amy had a few questions that she presented that I'll email out to the group, but we did not really get too far in that. And then uh, Christina had some questions for uh, Westford specific department. So um, we can definitely talk about that now. I'm sure I have, I had jotted down a few things, but I'm sure I'm, they were very obvious. So I'm sure I'm redundant to, um, and they were more, I guess, on the municipal side about, um, you know, asking a department head, what your biggest concerns or future expenses, if you had to make reductions, where would they be? I'm sure these are all, and, and then, um, something that we keep sort of talking about at a town level on the periphery is any um, suggestions for regionalization, but I thought might be helpful to get like from a department head's point of view. Um, but I, I guess as a next step, if it makes sense, I'm happy to maybe try to switch gears and look at um, the, the Christina's data and Vibu's graphs to see and maybe we can come up with maybe I can try to propose who we should be interviewing or I can work with you Christina to say which towns should we really start narrowing <clears throat> narrowing in on and what questions would we ask them and what spending do we want to highlight I think that sounds good I think um Bibbo and I were also going to work together to um try to use my spending detail sheet and analyze that um because he started out with the spending by function um, and there may just be like an apples to oranges comparison in there. So, uh, but I, you know, yeah, we can, we can kind of further do that. Like I said, at the last meeting, I've done kind of all of the Westford departments interviews. So I'd prefer for someone else to do those, but I'd love to sit in on the other municipality interviews if possible. Um, something uh, Tom and I quickly chatted about, and I'm sure he'll bring up in the next meeting, um, is whether it makes sense to just have the subcommittees sort of keep chugging along next week with the holiday um, and, and like sort of skip a week for um, the bigger group. So I wonder if that one might play into it for scheduling. I can meet next Wednesday at 1230. I do have a two o'clock, so I could be flexible anytime between 1230 and two and then three to four. I'm going to be in a house with about 20 people. I can try to find a corner, um, but I can't guarantee it. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> <less> of, so. <laughs> unclear. I can meet next Wednesday around the same time. I can meet then too. Yeah, me too. Okay, I can too. Um, All right. All and right, just, I will post I that. Guess, I guess like with the, I, maybe the point is with the holiday impact, does it make sense to, to keep that Wednesday chunk for this group versus the larger group, right? Like there's probably not a lot of opportunities to fit in two meetings next week. Right. I think that makes sense to skip the larger group next week. Um, I'll quickly add to that. Um, I did uh, add to Jenny's spreadsheet. I'm sorry, I walked in the door from a meeting, I had to like pay the babysitter, then the computer wasn't loading well. So I that's why I was on a different one. So none of my screens are sort of set up where um, they need to be. But they're one of Jenny's sheets, the one with the teacher FTEs, I think I added a column there for what I was finding from Desi on administrative FTEs. 
um, it's tough because I think the, this like universal question we have of like, how is this being calculated? What's, what's being fed into this number? Um, because Westford's number for administrative FTEs was like 26. Does that sound right, Jenny? I know I, I so. That's I correct. Got I remember it's 26.2 for Westford. So what I did was I pulled for our DART plus adjacent um, from the DESE website and here it is. And um, <clears throat> there's a big range. Um, <clears throat> like Arlington was 51.7. Um, the average was 28.7 and Westford was at 26.6. .6. The only sort of asterisk I guess was, is that it's, um, Desi has it labeled as experienced admin. And so when I was like, okay, our number is 26.6, .6, who is that? Um, you know, I counted up assistant principals, deans, principals, um, central office directors. And I think I got to, I, I don't have that here, but, um, anyway, so we're, we're guessing that Carrie was guessing that it maybe means three years of experience in the role. So it's not like this flat, great data set because um, people could be in the, like they're paying salaries for people who are, it's not a full capture of administrative um, positions, but it's easy to get because it's come right, coming right from Desi. And I thought it was at least something to add to the spreadsheet. But like I said, there was a big range um, and it's not totally clear how they're, how they're um, calculating it. Probably, probably one of those more created more questions than answers, I guess. Maybe it's just easier to look at like number of buildings like we've been saying earlier in per district. All right. Any last thoughts before we crash the other meeting? All right. So we're going to end this meeting and you should all have another link from Dan. I want to make sure that everyone has that before they get off so they feel comfortable with that. All right. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you.